it's no coincidence that people on Twitch like watching people watching Gordon Ramsay because it's funny because he goes off of people. How many times have you seen the idiot sandwich gift used, especially recently? In what world does this particular streamer need any help? No offense again to you, Felix. Yeah. Number one streamer on the platform, does he need a Twitch ad? Because this is a Twitch ad. <clears throat> Overwatch on Twitch is dog shit. No one watches it. Mm. No one watches it. Sacked by Krampus and towed off like Joseph Fritzl and his latest victim. <laughs> this is unreal, dude. <laughs> we need a technical timeout. Krampus timeout. Krampus timeout. <laughs> Welcome, folks, to January 5th, 2022 edition of The Breakdown, episode number four. I'm Sir Scoots, as always, and joined, as always, by Uber Shouts. Unfortunately, Mitch, you're in your, your little TV. You're back home. We're playing a little safe because of, obviously, the big spike in COVID, keeping you uh, in Cali, yeah. no <clears throat> sense flying, no sense getting you in a building with 20 some odd people that might fuck you and your kid up. So welcome. I mean, fucking hell. Is there just like, is there just a, a gigantic orgy happening across your fucking country right now, Scott? <sighs> a million cases in one day. Fucking Christ on yeah. a bike. Yeah, obviously uh, I'm in the TV because, uh, you know, uh, we're taking a little bit careful. It's really not about me getting it. It's just concern about the little one yep. Yep. potentially getting it. Uh, I know infant mortality is really low, but we're not willing to roll the dice there. So... Thank you for everyone at home for uh, bearing with us during this time. I'm looking forward to being back in the studio with the man real quick. Yeah, and again, better safe than sorry. So, and again, we have the ability through Bitfire technology to bring you in with your fancy, well, okay, not so fancy TV, but on your TV. Uh, before we get yeah, into I'm like the, the fire bridge. yeah, fire bridge, really, really cool technology. Before <laughs> we get into like the bullshit news of the week, let's talk about the really, really hard hitting and important news of the week. Congratulations. Mm. You are being made Thanks. an honest man by Ashley. She popped you the question, what's that like? You know, a girl sits and she dreams all her life of, <laughs> you know, the question and all that. How was that for you, princess? Let me put it to you this way. I was sat there at the table, mate, and this box comes sliding across like a proposition. <laughs> and then the cold, hard feeling of a gun barrel pressed to my neck. And and uh, an offer I couldn't refuse was made. Oh, no. No, it's fine. I mean, no. but you know what? Like, modern society doesn't really doesn't really teach men what to do when you get proposed to. So, obviously, I curtsied on the spot, mate. And, you know, and giggled and, and rubbed my hands together. And, and uh, no, it was it was really sweet. Um, <clears throat> she, she obviously beat me to the punch. But we've been together for, you know, three or four years now. And obviously, with a kid who's almost a year old, yeah. you know. Looks like she was looking to get the formalities out of the way, which is great. So yeah, it was a lovely time and lovely dinner. Um, it was funny because I was we, we booked this dinner a while in, in advance. Like there were, you know, social distancing policies, you know, in effect at the restaurant. But I was getting shifty. I was sat there like, oh, man, I don't know. Like there's people <laughs> everywhere. Like, yeah, maybe we should just have a dinner and sort of just go. So she's like, oh, fuck. He's just he's trying to get the check and leave. So she's had to, she's had to you know, pull out the ring box and go for it there. So, so you uh, threw it. Well, poor thing. I put her on the spot a little bit, put, put her under pressure, but it was nice. Well, I mean, again, Ashley, uh, if you don't know her, she's a, she's a live producer. She works for Critical Role, spent several years working for Activision Blizzard on the Overwatch products. So, again, you threw her for a live producer loop, right? You, you kind of changed the show on her there last minute, and I'm sure she handled it like a boss. Uh, I mean, I did, that, I did that almost every week in the Overwatch League, you know? I'd say something that had to be bleeped, or they have to cut to, like, a standby screen where I throttled Matthew or something like that. So, you know, she has to be on her toes. Live production is kind of her jam. So, yeah. you know, I expect her to be able to roll with the punches, so to speak. Well, it sounds like it went really cool. And, I, and obviously, formality, like you said, been together a long time, already got a kid, obviously, are, you know. All, so, very, very nice. Congratulations, though, obviously, from all of us that do not peak to Thank you. you. Really, really cool to see. And, again, a nice, fun twist on it that she you know, broke the norms, if you will, if there are norms anymore. Let's get into our first story. And this one, uh, I, I, it's a continuation, if you will, because we talked about this idea of uh, DMCA and streamers using React content, mainstream content, Lord of the Rings, MasterChef, you know, talking to their chat while they're really watching this other like mainstream type content. Um, and now it's gotten even crazier, right? Gordon Ramsay himself, and I'm going to rabbit ear quote himself, because um, it more than likely <laughs> is his agency or his PR people or his social media people, or maybe Gordon is so badass that he literally is like handling his own tweets. But he's gotten into this conversation with Twitch and XQC and stuff. So you pay much attention to this this week? 
Yeah, I did. I mean, it was obviously we were talking about it last week because of just how many people. I don't know how the fuck we got to a Master Chef meta, but that was you know where it was at. When people were watching Gordon Ramsay stuff and reacting to his content on Twitch, and we had a whole discussion about what was fair use and what was transformative in the yada yada, and we thought to ourselves, when these motherfuckers turn around and start demanding their uh, their their dues, we could have a little bit of an issue yep. on our hands. But <clears throat> is it possible that maybe instead of doing that? Um, you know, the, the, the mainstream has decided to extend their hand towards us degenerate gamers and, and actually be looking to initiate a collaboration of some sort. Because when, you know, so there's a clip going around. I think this was fairly recently where um, I, I think we had the clip as well, where Gordon is a little bit, um, you know, unsure about what Twitch is supposed to mean. We'll, we can roll the clip now and you can see you guys see his reaction uh, on a recent show, I think, of Next Level Chef. What do you do for a living? Uh, I stream on Twitch, my cooking show. What the f is Twitch? <laughs> I love him. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, motherfucker doesn't know what Twitch is. I mean, obviously, so this is really timely because we were talking about the amount of fucking people that watch you on Twitch. So, and obviously, you know, a, a guy sort of obviously has seen this episode, I think, Scott. Um, of Next Level Chef, this Eric Hamilton fellow with the tweet, and he's tweeted at Gordon Ramsay about it, and obviously this has sort of <laughs> sparked this discussion. Um, Gordon, though, very honest about the fact that he has no fucking idea what Twitch is. Yeah, and, and Jason brought up a very interesting point. Um, Jason's going down the rabbit hole, if you will, and maybe not even much of a rabbit hole, that it, this is all maybe a little bit of a corpo setup. Um, we're being turfed a little bit like there. This is all maybe more set up behind the scenes. Gordon knows absolutely what Twitch is. There's maybe already some collaboration coming between Twitch cooking Gordon and some of these streamers. Right. And this is maybe far too coincidental. Right now. I don't, I, I, I believe half of what Jason maybe thinks. I don't know if everyone streaming master chef reruns and doing react content is all some big play for this piece of content at the end. But it wouldn't be surprising that <laughs> that started conversations behind the scenes that have led to some sort of agreement that they're going to do some shit together. That now Gordon's playing along like he's doesn't know what it is. And hey, what is this Twitch shit? Oh, yeah. Let me talk to this XQC kid. He's already filmed something with XQC. Right. Um, I, I, yes. I'm saying that as a guess, not any sort of. No, insider, probably. You know? But I mean, what, what is this? You yeah. Know? I mean, like, so in this tweet. Gordon Ramsay is able to identify that, you know, XQC is a streamer. Now, you don't need a fucking PhD in, in cryptology to know, uh, to find out that XQC is, is in fact a streamer, right? But, you know, it's funny, Scott, because we go from this sort of Damocles sword hanging over Twitch and people that stream this content, right? And very astutely, um, you know, because you know what games are like, right? If you, if you draw battle lines with them, like, you, you don't, I mean, fucking hell, like, yep. you're in for a tough time. There, there are many of them, they're degenerate, they know hacking, they, they'll fucking post shit on, you know, Twitter, they'll get tr hashtags trending, you know what I mean? They, they, this is their domain. Uh, so, cleverly, it might look like instead that we, there's this expectation of there being a reckoning about DMCA might be subverted, and instead, Gordon Ramsay's representation might be like, instead of fucking shaking these guys down for money, Let's enact a collaboration with the gaming community yeah. for even fucking more money and goodwill on top of it. So, yeah. So maybe the spotlight got aimed over there for all the wrong reasons, right? And now, like, they're like, oh, shit, we could take advantage of this. Um, and, and, and again, I don't... I've thought for years that, like, Twitch had an opportunity. I remember I had a conversation with Aurelian and JP in her kitchen uh, when... Aaron worked for Twitch, and obviously JP, big variety yep. streamer, we were doing a bunch of role-play content out of his house, and he had all the cameras and a TriCaster and all this cool shit. We were sitting in his, his kitchen, and I was like, you know, you could bring all those cameras right up here because he was down in his basement. Put one there, put one there, put one here, put the TriCaster right there. You could do a cooking competition. You could fly two streamers in because they had a nice kitchen. They've now really remodeled a really nice one because they do their own cooking stream. But I was like, Aaron, why doesn't Twitch, like, lean into this – reality tv world that is blowing up in mainstream and all these cooking shows they've got cooking streamers why not getting them doing shit together and then you know maybe the finals are at a twitch con and so again i wonder if just very late to it they're now wrapping their arms around the cooking content on their platform with the cooking content in the mainstream world right um and who better than gordon ramsay i love this guy yeah. you know um i mean there's there's we were having this conversation in the, on the first episode of The Breakdown that I was on, right, a few weeks ago. Gordon Ramsay is a personality that resonates effectively with Twitch's demographic because 
he's extremely unfiltered and ostensibly authentic. Yes. Right? A lot of his behavior is, is not seen to be like very filtered or very buttoned up. Like that motherfucker's not reading off a teleprompter, right? It's no coincidence that people on Twitch like watching people watching Gordon Ramsay because it's fucking funny because he goes off of people. How many times have you seen the idiot sandwich gift used, especially recently, uh, you know, yeah. on against people on Twitter? The guy is fucking hilarious because he doesn't pull any punches. Uh, to be honest, it's also on a bit more of a scary note. That's also what attracted right-wing lunatics to donald trump but that's that's a whole nother story right we do want authenticity here and uh like it's, it's a bit of a slam dunk i think in terms of a partnership and there's a bit of a meta like cooking on twitch even if you're not a, a culinary streamer right every fucking streamer does this as their goal a sub goal like five thousand subs like oh, i'm gonna fucking you know do a cooking stream or whatever so uh, I don't know. This one seems like a hold in one straight out of the box. Yeah. And, and again, it's much like video gaming. Like, like Food Network's not going to do a cooking show with, you know, they, the theme of it might be terrible cooks get better, but like Twitch is the land where you can watch <laughs> someone be terrible at a game, someone be great at a game. So that goes yeah. for do them doing art, them doing music, them doing cooking. So yeah, it, it's wide open. And a guy like Gordon, I think, is perfect. I mean, you, you nail all those things. Now, where it gets maybe a little disingenuous if this is actually all some sort of corpo setup and like, you know, like XQC actually filmed something last month and like you watch on Fox, this next level fucking cooking is going to have a whole Twitch segment that they filmed this summer, right? We all got, we all got played, right? Um, which is fine, you know, so be it. it uh, I, well, well. It would just run counter to the whole idea yes. of authenticity, right? Like, yes. we know there has to be some degree of setup here, but if it's like some fucking deep state fucking <laughs> sleeper agent getting planted, like, a, a few people are going to roll their eyes a little bit, right? It needs to, at least to have an yeah. element of spontaneity about it, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess we'll see. Um, uh, but it just, it reads like they've already filmed something and they're certainly about to put something in the can. Have you been hired to host any cooking-related shows yet? You, uh, um, freelancer, you know what though i don't know if yeah i don't know how well like <laughs> i think there's a rule isn't like never have too many cunts in the kitchen Scott. No. i think that's what they there say you go. yeah no I, I think i think me and gordon might be a bit a bit of a supernova event there as that well would be, again yeah. i host i host shows you know what i mean that motherfucker also be hosting shows so that is true uh, no i am i am uh filming a tv show at the moment actually i can't i can't say what about yet um, but yeah, I'm getting my hosting chops. So one day, like maybe it. you might see me hosting this this normie shit, you know, for the fucking normie dollars, baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last thing I'll say about Gordon Ramsay is, if you're familiar with his um, Kitchen Nightmare show, the best episode ever still is filmed with a crazy lady by the name Amy. Amy's Baking Co. episode. You want to go look this one up? Scottsdale, Arizona. Wow. That's oh, all no. I'm going to say. Amy's no. Baking Co. <laughs> Legendary episode of Gordon Ramsay's show. Epic. Epic meltdown by this lady. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Next thing we're going to talk a little bit about is this whole Call of Duty blow up, Mitch. Call of Duty slash CDL because it's league related for the boys that bought into the franchise league and obviously game related because they have to always play the latest version of Call of Duty. Whole lot of drama blowing up around all of it. Uh, yeah. I don't even know where to start. I, I guess we should start with Hector kind of started it out with the idea that the game developers of the latest version of the game are really not giving much of a rat's ass about the world of a pro and how they scrim. And on his podcast, he was discussing how their private lobbies are basically being overrun during the holiday with some of the holiday stuff that the casuals are getting, which is great, but it really fucks up when you're trying to scrim and try to practice. So uh, we'll start with kind of, there's a lot of Hector and Nate shot talking about this, the big boys of that, uh, of that world. Um, and it, it's kind of crazy. They're pissed. They're really pissed. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, I think, look, this is a really interesting insight into like how it is working with these large developers on like the esports side. Um, and you have a very clear idea of where their bread is buttered when it comes to developers. Do you roll that, Jason? Let's see what Hector had to say. This is on obviously his podcast. I think he sat there with Bose and I think Scump's there as yep. well. So let's hear from... Uh... We have private lobbies with fucking Krampus. We <laughs> are a fucking second thought to competitive. Now, I will lead again by saying that everybody at the league level, okay, everybody that works on the league product wants Call of Duty competitive to work. It is the developers that are the ones that are falling way behind it and are letting us down. 
Yeah, and again, if you're not familiar, Krampus <laughs> is a holiday. I haven't seen a video, but I imagine he's a holiday <laughs> creature guy that pops up and messes with you, right? Like, maybe you have to kill him. Maybe someone in chat can tell me exactly what Krampus does when he shows up. But obviously, you know, like you're holding your angle or whatever you got to do. We're trying to scream. We're trying to scream, and there's fucking Krampus. I want that on a T-shirt. <laughs> I mean, That's so, I mean, we can laugh because we're not Call yes, of Duty people yeah. trying to fucking scream, but boy, oh my god, Scott, that's her, that's fucking egregious, mate. Yeah, and again, it all comes. You know, Hector makes a valid point. It's like they don't even think about us, man. Like, cause that all that is is a switch. He goes on. And he talks about it quite a bit. Like that's just a switch you turn off. You go. Krampus ends up in these lobbies. Krampus doesn't play in these lobbies. <laughs> like he kidnaps you. <laughs> he kidnaps you. Oh, that's even better. Oh god. Hey, can we pause the scream? I've been kidnapped by Krampus. We're chilling. <laughs> Like, I don't, I don't, I mean. I'm sorry. <laughs> These motherfuckers, hey, Call of Duty is, is a big business, right? Like, Call of Duty Esports is not a fucking joke. No. These guys have been doing it for years. It's li like the biggest brands, the biggest players have been built off the back of this. <laughs> How about this scump? Years and years of pro experience, fucking Call of Duty world champion, put in a fucking sack by Krampus and towed off like Joseph Fritzl and his latest victim. <laughs> this is unreal, dude. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> we need a technical timeout. Krampus timeout. Krampus timeout. And then obviously uh, uh, you know I mean okay. Uh, oh yeah, no, yeah. yeah, let's settle down. Um you go ahead with your point first. The only the only thing I wanted to ask you before we before we because there's there's more to it, right? Yes. This is like a, a so on the on the Krampus topic, what does it say to you though? Like if you're you know, it could be like in Counter Strike, right? Where you're trying to scream and instead of the chickens blowing up when you shoot them, yep. it's like the Legend of Zelda. Have you ever seen what you ever seen what happens when you fuck with chickens in Legend of Zelda? No, no. Yeah, it happened in it happened in New Zealand where oh, I'm not going to go with that joke. That's not good. Okay. But uh, when you when you attack the chickens in the Legend of Zelda, if you hit it too much, a whole swarm of chickens flies at you and and will kill you oh. in every game. Okay. So it's like they've they've had on every it's been hard coded into every Zelda game. You get fucked up by chickens if you attack the ones that are just like laying around. Don't mess um, with chickens. You know, so be like that in Call of Duty. So what does that tell you about what what the dev thinks about? Your enterprise as, let's say, evil genius team owner or manager. What, what does it say to you if you're trying to scream and that shit's happening? I mean, I gave these guys a whole bunch of money. I gave the left hand a whole bunch of money, and they ain't talking to the right hand, and the right hand don't give a fuck about what I'm doing over here, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and, yeah. you know, and, like, and I mean, like, CDL, the people trying to run a league, and the people investing, the team owners, the players playing – and the guys making the game, gals and you know developers, people actually coding the stuff. And and again, there is a different player base in some regards. The casual world sometimes doesn't give a rat's ass about anything in an esport of a game, but you still you really have to care about it when you're charging money for a slot and all these kind of things. Valve can say fuck you to anybody because they don't <laughs> charge anyone yep. to use their game. Cloud Nine, nobody pays a dime. Oh, Cloud Nine, bad joke. Nobody pays a dime <laughs> to have a Counter Strike team playing Tier One Counter Strike to the developer. Valve doesn't charge shit yes. to make money on that IP, right? Can't do that in Activision Blizzard games, the top. Can't do it in League of Legends. Um, and so no, you just play Henry G to do that, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I do play that Cloud9 does come back to my favorite game. But point being, you like these guys, you know, they've got a... What is when we talk about like it's when a when a developer cares and they wrap their arms around the idea of esports and they do do good things. That's what we all aspire for. But when you kind of do the opposite, when you're actually charging to do all the good things and you've built all the things the team owners need over here, they want security. They don't want to get relegated. They want to have an asset, which is that slot that actually maybe increases in value if the league takes off, right? Same issue with League of Legends and Overwatch in the sense of why these owners want these coded owned slots, right? Can't lose it. So it really helps your bottom line, helps your investors, helps all those things. So they're getting that part and, you know, had to, in Nate shot, he talks about it, like had to like lay his ass on the line to his investors to get that investment. Now he looks the fool because they're taking the money, but they're not, they're not helping their own league in that sense. I mean, yeah, they're, they're hampering it. This is, and this is, yeah, this is a completely different issue, right? So last thing I'll say on this, the Krampus issue is that the fact that you cannot turn this off in private lobbies is just, it's incompetence. It's just straight up incompetence from game developers yeah. that have been doing this shit for ages. Like, so it's a bit frustrating in Overwatch when seasonally, especially around Halloween and Christmas, some of the maps are uh, become a different time of day and sure. they become themed, right? So Halloween Hollywood has like pumpkins and hay bales and, you know, 
crates and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, King's Row and Christmas is, you know, fucking Christmassy. It tanks your fucking FPS, right? Yep. But you can turn it off in a private lobby. In a private lobby, you can select to have the normal fucking map. I'm, I'm pretty sure. If you're trying to play ranked, it's annoying. But that's as bad as it gets. It is completely unacceptable that this exists. And I think, you know, the, the fact that it obviously it reflects very badly on Activision's, uh, you know, priorities is a secondary to the fact that it's just dog shit uh, development. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, Scott, Nate Shot had a different issue. So this is yep. a different issue, but still a very pertinent one and still says a heck of a lot about what Activision Blizzard think about their fucking esports. Roll this shit. If Activision is telling the CDL teams that Kenny, Octane, Draza, and Envoy, you guys cannot play together on stream in any sanctioned tournaments, whether it's from Activision or a different uh, you know, governing body, whether it's a Warzone tournament, whether it's an S&D tournament, Activision is telling you that you can't play together until the first kickoff tournament in late January. That means this brand new game, competitive Call of Duty, is not going to be seen by anybody if the players aren't streaming scrims. So it's a, it, not only it's, it's a problem from the league 100%. A lot of it stems from the league. But if the players aren't streaming anything else, and I get they don't have a lot to stream, I get that they can't play tournaments with their teams, and I get that scrims aren't fun, everybody's dead in the water. Yeah, and then he, you know, he follows it up with a tweet uh, kind of talking about, again, the, the, the breadth of Call of Duty, you know, how, how long it's been around, obviously the personalities, you know, storylines, rivalries, typical good esports stuff, right? Um, and, All true. And basically, yeah, and by the way, you know, this game releases and you're not allowed to play together and stream it till February, months away, right? Kind of shooting their game launch in the esports foot, to say the least. Um, and, and, and again, I just... It's all these, it's very interesting week for Call of Duty because all these kind of related, unrelated stories from the big boys of Call of Duty are starting to stack up with, they're all very unhappy, um, you know, with with how this is washing out. Um, and I, 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 I... No, it's bad, Scott. It's, it's super fucking bad. Mate, this game was released on November the 5th. So you're telling me <laughs> these motherfuckers cannot stream them playing together for three months until the first... Uh, you know, Call of Duty kickoff event for the Call of Duty, the CDL. I, I'm s sorry. <clears throat> what, I understand that maybe like, you know, you have three what, three different game developers work on Call of Duty and then a, a Raven works on Warzone as well. So I guess you have more than three, but yeah. like for the, the base game, right? The multiplayer, right, I don't know how they split it up now. The problem is, is that you, you do have three different developers and like maybe their roadmap for when features are going to be released, you know, differs. But this game was released without league play. Every fucking Call of Duty is released without league play. Straight up. So the fuck are these people supposed to, like, you know, play competitively? And no one is... Scott, yeah. no one's going to stream scrims. No one does that. It's just dumb. You don't stream scrims because you don't want to give a competitive edge to your opponents. And what, that's the only way you're supposed to show your viewers the competitive experience in Call of Duty. Man, come on. What the fuck is going on here? This is actually absurd. I, I don't blame Nadeshot for for having some second thoughts and, and you know, fearing for this. I, I've seen tweets from the COD community saying, like, COD... Competitive is in a bad fucking place. Look at this tweet, Scott. Yes. This, this. If you're the league, you do not want your fucking investors saying this shit. Yeah, and I remember Nate Shot made a pretty strong stand at the beginning of a hundred thieves, and that they were going to stay away from franchising for a while. Didn't believe in it, especially didn't like the idea. This was like I've always known Overwatch was hot and heavy, and you had to have a different yep. team name. There was no having any part of your name in the new name, right? And then when. Overwatch got launched and got going o OWL. Then, you know, a couple years later, CDL gets kind of organized and they've loosened some of those things. You know, you could have a phase Atlanta. Yes, much to the much to the displeasure of a lot of owners, by the way, because they only started doing that with the Atlanta phase. Yeah. And then all these other teams are like, hang on. Hang like on. Huntsman were like, what the fuck? Are we the Huntsman? Yeah. yeah. What, what is yeah. going on here? Why are you now making... Uh, oh, God, it was so yeah, bad. Cloud and like, the LADs yeah. were... You know. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, <sighs> so, but I remember Nade made videos, like, because, again, Nade's a Call of Duty guy, right? So and Nade initially said, no, yeah. we're not getting into this. Don't believe in it. And my investors don't believe in it. We're not doing it. He, somewhere along the way, got convinced, saw the PowerPoints, did whatever, um, and now he's regretting oh, yes, it. That dude. tweet about him basically saying, you know, I went and begged, and now I feel the fool. Um, and yeah, again, they are 
they're fucking it up. I thought, I thought of the two, CDL would certainly be the one that would prove my doubts about a franchise league because of the strength of the Call of Duty brand and year in, year out, tons of casuals, good competitive scene, really North American centric game in that sense, where it's Overwatch, not so much. So I thought, thought okay, you're gonna do this homestand model. That's what MLG used to do anyway with these kind of games. This will be this this might work. Overwatch, eh, maybe not. But this is already a, this is gonna be fine, and it just seems like every season, every year, and sure, COVID hits them just like it hit you guys at the worst possible time. But like, it seems like well, we got fucked because we're a global league as yes. well, without like yeah. being split into regions. So we yep. got Giga Rex. But like, it just seems like they've done everything they can to like shoot any possible goodwill in the foot with this game. I saw the developer that always is talking back to the pros get in. Maybe it was Crimson. I can't remember whose face he got into. I, and it was about league play. Someone was saying, where's league play? Can we have league play? And the developer came back in his usual snarky way, like, why don't you just be thankful for all the people that put the game out for you or something like that? And I was like, dude, these people, yes, they get paid to play your game. They're pros. They're helping. They're trying to help you, like, sustain your fucking IP. Whoa. Right? Ugh. Yeah, it's just crazy. It's one thing for like people that you know, you know, that, that beg their mum to swipe the old credit card and get them the game every year to complain about the state of the game. Right? Yeah. You're a consumer. These <clears throat> these people playing in the Call of Duty League CDL are not just consumers. They are fucking stakeholders. They're stakeholders. You can't just be like, be glad for what you have. That's not how you talk to a fucking yeah. stakeholder, Scott. It's crazy. You know what you say to a stakeholder? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full. Right on the double. I'll fucking get that sorted for you. And, and it's, they, this, the, these teams are in partnership. Yeah, they are not in thrall. They are not subject to the fucking the, the ivory tower musings of Activision Blizzard. They're part of it. I, I assume there's strong revenue sharing agreements. They fucking bought into this league, and they're not being put first. I understand that you know to make money on a game, you need to deal with the the average consumer, right? The, yep. the console player, the you know the but but you cannot you cannot forsake your competitive community to such a degree because then you're wasting money on marketing because on the other side of the coin, Scott, esports, it's marketing. It's one form of marketing for the game. Yep. All right. Putting, putting signs up in a subway, it's marketing. Running esports, it's also marketing. Slightly different, but really ultimately the same thing. We now have esports budgets. It used to just be from the marketing budget, they would spend some money on esports tournaments and running that shit. But it's really just another marketing budget that's separate from the normal one. Uh, so, you know, understanding that is important because esports hasn't, it has not got to that transcendental point where it is more than a marketing exercise. There are moments, there are glimpses of this reality. I think like, ironically enough, because Valve doesn't care to use Counter-Strike esports at all to market their platform or game, Counter-Strike is the least marketing exercise of all esports, right? People are there for the game. They're in the fucking cathedral of Counter-Strike. You know, they're just loving some good counter. The vast majority of esports titles, man, are still marketing expenditures, uh, and people seem to get so surprised when they're being treated, when they get treated as such. So it's a fine line, but we could all agree that this is absolutely unacceptable behavior. But I think the stewardship of the Call of Duty League is fucking terrible. I know they tried to get Matt Morello over to do CDL as well. Uh, you know, yep. Matt obviously works on programming for the Overwatch League. I'm telling you, nine months time, eight months time, we're going to be in a much better place than the CDL at this rate. You know what I mean? Yeah. We are, I guarantee you that. Knowing what I know. And you know what? You know what Overwatch did? They took an Overwatch League commissioner and they put him in charge of all commerce for the franchise of Overwatch. Right? They hired an endemic esports person and put him right at the fuck of the uh, right, sorry, right at the right at the top <laughs> of the fucking totem pole. The guy who decides how all the money gets spent. That's the sign of good faith. That's what tells me that, you know, this esport is becoming more than just a marketing expenditure, right? Yeah. Something that could transcend just another way to get people to buy the godforsaken game. Well, let's talk a little bit about the marketing because, again, big part of it has happened before. And I'm wondering if this is an Activision Blizzard thing. So we're going to circle back a little bit to this idea of not being able to stream or having rules and regulations okay. put on you when you <clears throat> can stream. Because Overwatch did this first, right? If you remember, years ago, <laughs> yeah. it turned into, obviously, a Kotaku article. Uh, the Overwatch pros were, were basically like, told you all can't be pub stomping so much we're gonna put some rules and regulations on how and when you play together because you're kind of like crushing it right now what was the do you remember this drama at the time behind i mean without you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely so 
Get, it fucking oh, because me now off. this is what CDL is uh, uh, being told something similar. Like, hey, th different reasons. Like, yeah, you gotta yeah, yeah. wait because the games ain't ready for you. But also, we're trying to limit you helping us market and expose our game. What the fuck? Why are they doing it's, that? It's a big problem for me. Can we bring that up? Uh, can we bring that up one more time? Because there's a couple key points in this thing from a Kotaku article I want to point out. Um, kind of more than two Overwatch League players queuing up together. By the way, in ranked, <clears throat> I think actually now, uh, I think at GM and above, you can only be in a two stack. I don't think you can have more than two people in a group. Um, that's just, and this happens, by the way, in like, yeah, so this is all, this is back in 2018. I remember this though, because you know what's amazing? You know what's awesome? Midweek entertainment, pugs, pro player pugs. You know what's even better about that? I cast it on my Twitch channel and it blows up. That would be great. Mm. Captain Flowers did this. Mm -hmm. League of Legends Pro Pugs. Motherfucker. Like, on a personal level, I would love to have two, 3,000 subs as a result of doing this. Uh, you know, that would be great. <clears throat> but um, also, it'd be something I, I would really quite enjoy doing getting Overwatch League players to play Pugs. Um, they were doing this for quite a while. They were playing Pugs because they didn't want to play ranked because there's too many shit cunts in ranked. They, like, there's nothing to play for. You know what there is to play for in ranked? Some gold guns you already have mm -hmm, 30 mm -hmm. seasons ago. Yeah. Because the game is just terrible at rewarding, you know, your playtime. Because he's, you can almost argue that the microtransaction model in Overwatch is too generous because you can just fucking get all the skins like, like this. There's nothing, there's nothing prestigious. There's nothing elite. There's no, uh, there's not even a fucking battle pass, Scott. So it doesn't even, it doesn't even incentivize you for long, you know, hours put in. And once you have all the golden guns, like you don't care. Like I, I've run into quick play heroes queuing for ranked just because there was nothing else in the game to earn. So they would go into rank and throw games because they didn't. They were just casuals. They didn't give a fuck about winning. <clears throat> and my games getting ruined by these guys who just were looking for something else to earn. But this is this is a huge problem because it really killed the potential streaming careers of a lot of Overwatch League players. <clears throat> Some still get away with it, but Super has to stream mm. ranked all the time. Getting people throwing his fucking games. They find out who he is. They just troll. They just fuck up. They yeah. stream snipe him. All this sort of shit. Pro players don't want to deal with this stuff. Uh, and, and what happened was there was an exodus of Overwatch League pros from the competitive ladder to play pugs, to play in-houses, because they were, they were streamed, it was fun, they were able to sort of network, and, you know, they were still able to reach their fan bases because they could stream their POV and the comms, and it was, it was really good. And Blizzard were like, nah, we're shutting that down. We want you guys to go back to the ladder. But you can't all queue up together. No, 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 only two players. It's bullshit. I want to bring it back so badly, and I've been harassing Matt about it. He's being, he's being evasive, but, um, <laughs> you know, he also knows that, you know, it, it's it's... There's a reason why Blizzard outlawed it in the first place. No, I just it, yeah, it makes sense. I, I don't get it's just it. Fucking dumb. I don't get the, that kind of ruling, you know. And it, when it, it when it comes to CDL, I, I, again, I don't I don't get. I totally get. I totally get where Hector and all the owners are coming from, and Nate Shot's frustration. And now I'm wondering how much of that frustration is these guys are like, you know what? We're doing this Halo thing now. Halo's back. HCS is back. I didn't have to pay one million dollars. I didn't have to pay $5 million. I didn't have to pay $20 million. And guess what? I got shit in game. I got a land series. Yeah. <laughs> I got everything I fucking need. I got developer support. And guess what? I didn't have to buy it. Wow. Wow. Yeah, but no, you know, I, I, it remains yeah. to be seen whether the financial model of the HCS is viable. You know, they didn't make money on Rally. There's no fucking way. Oh, no. No, I'm uh, with you on that. You know, Obviously, I'm... I'm, uh, I'm extrapolating two very different business models, the open market and yeah. very much a closed franchising you know one. But yeah. They need a players union, like a protection racket, but it's called a players union. What do you think about that? Scott? I like players associations. You like that? You I, any, I like you any of those yeah. floating around? I, I know for years the Call of Duty <laughs> guys have been trying. Um, I don't know if they ever will. It's hard getting players to, no, you know, to care, but no, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I know. I, I don't know because like, I, I kind of remember there was a discussion about it and Scump was like, why the fuck should I care about a union? Yeah. I don't give a shit. I'll get the bag. And everyone's like, hey, can we just get you on board? Because it's really important that everyone's on board. No, 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 no. Fuck off for this shit. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to a union, you scrubs. I'm rich. Yeah. Fuck off. But, it, but this, you is, know, this is obviously the problem with that. Yeah. You have to get everyone on board. Yep. And, and again, even to scumps, like, did, you know, against scump, if they would have done it several years ago, they would. That's a rumor, by the way. Okay. Don't oh, come yeah. at me with all your fucking bags. No, but that generally is a, uh, you know, obviously I helped. And still advise the Counter Strike one, and it's a it's a it's an interesting conversation with players because you do have players that 
are like, how does it help me now? How does it help me in a month? You know, I might be retired in two years. So really, I just get to focus on doing my thing, playing the game. And then you do have some that will get that what they're doing now and what they're trying to implement might help them, but really would maybe help the guy in five years. You know, um, yeah. Uh, because, yeah, because, again, you, players just need to understand, like, no one cares about them but them, really, at the end of this business, just like in sports. They need. So anyway, not men to talk about PAs at all today. Um, but yeah, so I guess we'll see how this, this shakes up. <laughs> Wait, someone's <laughs> laughing in my ear. What was that? <laughs> oh, that's you. <laughs> no, that's a new fucking chill. Scott just wants to shake down more tournament organizers for fucking for fucking free hardware. I see what you're about. But no, look, the, the bottom line hardware, is, mate, let, like the players should just be able to play. Like people, people don't want to watch their fucking yeah. pro players forced to like queue up with morons. And like, I, I feel so bad for guys. Like, Super has an adamantium mental. Like, the guy is just unbreakable. He sits there with his chat going a mile a minute, people, like, you know, redeeming, like, sound bites to throw him off, and then everybody in this game just throwing, and he's just he's just holding onto the maelstrom with white-knuckled hands, just going, nah, I'm going to make this my own. Like, not, not many people can do that. That's why, by the way, Overwatch on Twitch is dog shit. No one fucking watches it. Mm. No one watches it. It's like, it's Q, it's Emong, it's Flats, it's Super, a few guys, right? And then the, the popular streamers were the really, really out there ones like Defriend. No one fucking watches it because it's the same streamer having to try and keep themselves motivated to play ranked while their games are full of absolute bonobos. Yeah. So yeah, it's fucking hard. Uh, so that's what I'll say on that one. I just, I really wish that they would relax some of these restrictions. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure there's some fucking convoluted reason why they're doing this. I just want them to, I don't know, not do it yeah just don't do it Scott. yeah just fucking get rid of these restrictions i mean and, and i guess my final word on it would be you know call of duty 4 pc was the best call of duty anyway so it really doesn't matter after that yeah here here pro mod was the fucking heyday that shit infinity ward actually got it right with that game and then Treyarch come in and fucked up black ops i'm telling you man those are the golden years was it oh nine it's like oh nine ish was like the the de decline of the golden era of call of duty god God bless. Those were good days, man. Good days. Mm. Good days. Uh, let's move on. Before we get to our break, we got one more topic. And obviously, a uh, reminder, we do questions and answers at the end of every episode. So if you've got a burning question about any of these topics we've discussed or anything that's popped up this week or anything you want to ask us, hit us up in Twitch chat and we will document it. If it's a good question, we'll, we'll hit you up with it at the end of it. <coughs> now let's talk about the world of Twitch. The world of Twitch. Our favorite online streaming platform we're here right now live boy they've had a week they've had a couple weeks uh this one we want to touch oh, base man. on this money laundering uh turkey uh bit kind of scenario scam because uh some news broke yesterday um uh with some some arrests and some kind of punishments on the story that broke a while ago yeah. so um if you're not familiar uh, story broke. Uh, Eurogamers, what is this, November ish? Yeah. Uh, that basically uh, Turkish Twitch streamers were involved in a big money laundering scheme. And to give you a very down and dirty, quick and easy understanding of how it works, I steal a credit card. I, or I get access to a credit card, credit card number, uh, which is more likely yep. what happens. Obviously, I'm not stealing people's wallets. I then go get and make a Twitch account. <laughs> Anyone can make a Twitch account. I'm user. Johnny Bravo 265 today. I then take you that. You can find me at Slasher. At, yep. Yeah. And I take, I take my stolen credit card and I buy a bunch of bits on Twitch's platform, which are one cent for one bit. Buy a bunch of bits with this, uh, with this free money of mine. I then go to my streamer friend who I've already talked to and made a deal with, and I'm going to give him a bunch of my bit, these bits. He's going to then cash those bits out from Twitch because they, Twitch turns those bits into cash for you, just like when you sub, you end up getting paid by Twitch a chunk of those subs. I then give you a percentage. I give you most of that money back because you are the scammer. I keep a percentage. I think it was 80-20 is what I read that they're doing. And now we have taken that credit card. We've pulled cash off it. We've washed the cash through the purple machine of Twitch safely into my bank account. And they are even setting up the streamer's we're setting up the bank accounts to like send straight to where they needed to go, right? Very elaborate, very fucking well done, if you will. And only got caught because that top 100 streamer list on Twitch leaked and people that had no fucking right 
to make that much money based on how many <clears throat> followers and subscribers they had were way up the money list because bits were counted because bits is a type of Twitch currency. So it was in Twitch's list of the count of money you got. Yep. So that got all these red flags going, and now all the news is starting to break. Fucking crazy shit. So good, good job with the synopsis there. Yeah, I think you. it's actually quite it's complicated because you cannot a user you cannot buy bits and then refund the bits, right? You you cannot redeem those bits for cash. So there needs to be someone who receives them, then they become cash, become fiat currency via them. And then can come back to you via uh, sort of a bank transfer, like a, I guess some. It, it's not refunded because I think if you refund bits, uh, you, you you probably get the bits back. I'm not even sure if you can do that, but yeah. So that's that's sort of how it works. And it was all these, it was all Turkish Twitch accounts, Scott. So I think people were realizing that yes, there were low follower accounts, but they were all Turkish. Uh, you know, I mean, it was it was happening within this sort of this community, uh, and <clears throat> we became aware of it in the Valorant community because Cined, um one of the best Valorant players in the world hails from Turkey. Uh, he obviously was on a uh, team Ascend who won yeah. Valorant champions. He had a brush with this, but he wasn't really incriminated with it. I don't even think he really knew what was going on. So Upcomer did produce an article that implied that Sinead was, yeah. was implicated in this whole circuit. Really irresponsible. Uh, it, it later came out that that wasn't the case. They were just being very clickbaity about it. Um, but his brother, Sinead's brother apparently was implicated in this. This is not a joke. Yeah. This was done on such a large scale, Scott, that people in Turkey are getting fucking arrested. Their houses are getting raided. Their PCs and stuff are getting taken. Uh, and these people, some are minors, by the way, are being arrested. This is this came up in the literal Turkish parliament. That is just how uh, you know <laughs> much of a big deal it is. It was the chief prosecutor's office in Istanbul uh, was the one that actually began this probe. So you're right. Maybe if that top Twitch list didn't come out, uh, you know, we wouldn't know. But it was very sus, right? Yeah. People were still saying this is a bit weird. Like all these tiny streamers are getting these big donations. Clever, fairly elaborate plan that ultimately uh, was uncovered. And now the hammer is falling. Yeah. And maybe it would have got caught eventually. Maybe this just sped up like the, the you know, the red the red flags in, in the right people's hands. And Dan uh, brings up, imagine in chat, brings up a couple points that, uh, it was almost like they weren't necessarily set up in advance, even that uh, I, I would come to your stream, give you a big donation with bits and go, hey, you know, message you go, hey, would you like to make more and kind of broker and try to get you into the scam? So maybe not everyone was pre set up on the scam, but like were enticed with bits to continue this. Hey, I'll give you more if you give me some back. And maybe those people didn't even know what, you know, obviously that it was stolen or anything, you know, uh, uh, all sorts of ways. You know, it's like when the college kids always get approached to like fix matches, right? Because what they try to do is they try to get you to just fudge once, right? Just, just cross that line a little bit because then they got you. Now they can threaten you, right? They can hold your, your career over your head. Say, oh, well, you did this, do it again, or I'm going to have to go tell the coach and there goes your career. So, you know, there, there could have been some threatening stuff once someone took a little bit, all sorts of crazy shit. So very interesting, but also opens up this, this, this kind of overarching question about like how easy it is to launder with all these kind of digital tools, right? We were joking um, yeah. and, and talking off, off camera that I had heard years ago when World of Tanks was, you know, blowing up, what, almost a decade ago now, I guess, that there was a whole bunch of money laundering of the tanks. You know, you would use your ill-gotten gains to buy the tanks, to then sell the tank to somebody else to clean that money. And I was like, oh, <clears> fuck, <throat> that works. That kind of works. It can work with skins. Mm. There's a lot, I, you know, it, it depends on how you wash it and the systems you're using. But I, I was very intrigued by that. I was like, okay. You want to know a funny story, Scott? Sure. Yes, please. So I was actually a competitive World of Tanks player. Okay, okay. Um, I did not know this. Because I, I, I used to cast the game, uh, so and I wanted to really learn more about it. So I actually embedded into an Australian World of Tanks team. Um, uh, who were, okay. their name was Numb, and we later brought them under the Mind Freak banner, which is an organization that I started. So I, I, I played a heck of a lot of that game, uh, and I knew, oh, fuck him, I knew, mate, that game was absolutely propped up by the Belarusian Mafia. Like, the people that I dealt with at their esports events, and I did, I was, you know, this is this is not a brag. I was the premier World of Tanks caster for a couple of years, uh, you know, covering, like, in English, covering, like, the World Championships and yep. stuff like that with my mate Oliver Maxfield who now works at ESL's mobile uh, gaming division. So great friend of mine. But uh, that was honestly the main gig that I was given when I got brought over to, to Germany from, from Australia. 
And I'm telling you, man, I, I met Victor Keasley, who's the guy who, <laughs> you know, basically owns the game. Sus as fuck, man. His, his, his attendants look like they could have been mafiosos. The after parties, oh, those after parties definitely had a little bit of a hang on. There's way too much money being thrown around here. Like something isn't right here. So I believe that. Now, I will say though, at least when I played the game, you couldn't sell people your tanks. Mm. You couldn't. Maybe you couldn't, I'm getting it wrong. Maybe the, it wasn't a tank. Maybe it was something else that was transferable or. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I, again, this the, what you're referring to might have occurred after I stopped playing. They might have, because I know they've loaded a lot more functionality mm. into the game since then. Um, not a terrible game, honestly. If you, I think if you really, uh, if you really like warfare, uh, mm. you know, if you're kind of, you're probably, you're, you're probably Eastern European already because I think there's still so much fascination with the machines of war in yeah. that part of the world, yeah. but also in the United States as well. Um, then it's actually a great game because it's very historically accurate in terms of how the tanks behave and, and stuff like that. But yes, I. Long story short, the people involved <laughs> at, at that game at the developer level, a little bit saucy. Yeah, uh, and I, I believe that something like that could be conducted. I always thought it was a, a, a money laundering racket for the Belarusian mafia, personally. So that's why I thought they makes sense. They, man, yeah. these guys had cheerleaders at esports events. Like it was fucking and tanks bizarre. at esports events. Like, you know, crazy stuff. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude! I'm the first, the first gig I did in Australia. <laughs> I, I did like a, a like a, a, a PAX gig, gig where I was like, you know, just I was running the booth. Yeah, and I'd yep. be like, come play. You know, I try to get people. Come. Yeah, I had a fucking tank there, didn't they? No, uh, but it's great because they had a bunch of a lot of the players were like a current or previous Australian Defence Force personnel. Oh, okay, and they would play like they were in their platoons in their fucking. It was so funny, man. And they were like oh. forty, you know, forty five, like some retiree age. Incredible. So great part of my life, but the games are a games a, a trip, man. It's a whole nother world. I, I'm gone off topic yeah, there, but there's I, a bit about me and World of Tanks. Cast no, this is good. This is I didn't know that. Uh, I just remember spending twenty minutes <laughs> putting my tank in position and then getting blown up and like, okay, this game sucks. I'm out. Yep, and getting fucked on. Yeah, yeah like, that's most fuck of the this, game. Fuck this yep. game. I'm out. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> we're going to take a quick commercial. No, we're not. Wait. Oh, my God. I got one more Twitch topic. Twitch topics right here. Twitch topics. One more. We're still on the topic of Twitch. Let's talk about this one is broke like yesterday, day before. A little bit of drama in the Twitch land in regards to who Twitch recommends when you stop your stream and your followers need to go somewhere else. Mitch. Where do you want mm. your streamers to go when you're done streaming? Well, uh, I want them to go to my VODs and just watch them. <laughs> I want them to go to their wallet. Yeah. And then I want them to go to my YouTube channel that hasn't been updated in like three years. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the Quint just established here that you, you, have a, you have the option to set channels that you want to host when your channel's offline. You know what I mean? Yep. So presumably... But this is that was a clip, right? What what Technic was showing there was like a clip of his channel now is offline. So I guess when you have clips embedded elsewhere, they don't just play whoever your channel's hosting if you're auto hosting someone, right? Um, yeah, go, go. I guess you know what? If Twitch wants to send people over to the fucking millionaires, <laughs> okay, fair enough. I yeah, is this reasonable, Scott? I, I, is this really something worth kind of being mad over, or what do you think? I don't know. So I don't know if there's an entitlement issue here, which kind of to what you're alluding to, like, is this much ado about, like, tough shit? Um, or, because there's kind of, I guess, on one side of it, there's two issues. There's one thing that you're recommending someone to my viewers when I'm done that I might not recommend to my viewers. I might be diametrically opposed to them for whatever reason, because you're not reading any sort of logic of, me and like to get hostless or anything like that so where are you getting that my followers want to now watch xqc where are you getting that piece of logic or is it completely unrelated and it's more of a whatever they want to market push that week they put into this ad that's one thing so who are you to tell my viewers what they should watch next i hate this guy he's evil to me and i i don't hate you felix don't get me wrong um and then that's that's one thing then is what you just said in what fucking world does this particular streamer need any fucking help? No offense again to you, Felix. Yeah. Number one streamer on the platform, does he need a Twitch ad? Because this is a Twitch ad. <clears throat> does he need a Twitch ad? Yep. You know. Um, I mean, it's not, the, it's, not, it's not to help Felix, it's to help Twitch. Because Twitch, or Twitch determines... Oh, it's definitely not... A, that yeah, obviously they not will, they will drive greater platform retention from bringing people to their more popular streamers, right? You know, it's it's a no-brainer that like people going to watch XQC will probably just you know if they get involved in this community, uh, you know they'll 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 use the platform more regularly. They're more likely to buy subs and bits and all the rest. Frankly, it's not 
if it's in a clip that you've embedded somewhere and it happens at the end of it, like, sorry, I don't really, you don't really have jurisdiction over that. Like you are, you know, I, I, I believe that there is ways that Twitch can definitely help their like less popular streamers, but like you're, you yourself are not online. I know you would like this to point to one of your recommended streamers, but when it gets to the point where you, the user, start getting to curate what another user might get to see on Twitch when you're not live, you're probably crossing a line. I know you maybe don't endorse XQC or maybe you wouldn't recommend yeah. that people watch him, but you're not live. You know, you don't, get, you don't get to control the narrative when you're not streaming, in my humble opinion. You already get to decide what people you auto-host uh, on your channel, right? I, I think that that's probably enough, in my opinion. As someone who streams three to four times a week for like two hours each time, full disclosure. So I'm not I'm not a full-time streamer by any stretch of the imagination. But motherfucker, if you were full-time streaming, this would be a problem because you'd be fucking live and not bitching about where Twitch is telling people to go when you're not. Yeah, and, and again, it's, it's uh, my, so, you know, obviously I covered those two logical possible thoughts. My side of it is, uh, again, I come yeah. from an age when we, Jason and I used to have to buy fucking bandwidth to do this. We would have to pay to fucking hope someone would then use the bandwidth we, or we'd have to do a peer-to-peer -peer with Octashape or something like be before the days of free streaming <laughs> platforms, right? Um, so, yeah. like, I look at this like, motherfucker, this, they've given you a platform. They don't charge Dude, you for it. I they don't rev even own share. Free bandwidth. You know, and again, read your contract. You don't own shit. You don't own. They could start turning your panels on and off. They could start embedding fucking ads on your page. I'm not saying they should or I would like them to. But like somewhere along the way, we are given this beautiful free platform to use. Yes, Twitch makes millions of dollars, too, on our content. But like it is a very nice two way street, not having to buy bandwidth, not having to have a CMS system and all this kind of stuff. Chats, all these things that we all kind of take for granted. That is a big old thing that gets turned on for us for free. You know, when I was explaining to the guy that owns this building the other day, I'm like, no, Bob, you could literally just go make a Twitch account, plug your computer in, have a TV channel because he's from TV. Right. He's like, what do you fucking mean? I go, just like we're doing. Doesn't, doesn't cost you a dime. Right. He's blown away. Right. So I think in some yeah. regards, this is a little entitlement. Like, you know what? Like, <laughs> come on now. I, I just think it's weird that they're the who they're advertising more than that they are doing it i guess in some I mean, of course they are yeah. of course this of course they're advertising yeah. their number two by revenue stream no i you just look at it like he doesn't I mean, need maybe to help they, maybe you know they can people towards... <laughs> um, yeah i know but pokey I mean, also they're on not the front point page people right now critical so. role yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, he's always he's always streaming critical role is not live all the time right it's actually live way less than xqc is it just has really really strong uh sort of fandom oh god so, great fandom yeah, yeah. motherfuckers live you know, I don't know. I mean, yeah, but why wouldn't you point people that may... Because you're on Discord, right? This is this is cross-platforming that Twitch is trying to do. Yes, you're going to want to try... If you're, if you're, if you're being shown in a cross-platform context, like on Discord or on Twitter or whatever, you're probably, to drive the highest chance of retention, going to drive them to your top streamer. Like, I think I don't think anyone needs that to be ex explained to them any further. So, no, nah, look, like I said, maybe when at the end of your clip, you, you know, maybe... It would be nice to get to decide like where people get pointed because it's still the, your content technically that's still owned by Twitch, as we know, based on the user agreement. And yeah, you know, all you know, everybody but the top zero point one percent of streamers don't get paid very well, and there are a myriad of reasons for this. But there are there are just bigger bigger issues yeah. with the Twitch um, creator relationship that need to be ameliorated than this one. I would say, Scott. Uh, that's, no, I agree. That's my piece on the matter. I agree. We'll keep an eye on it. See if they, you know, what generally happens is Twitch comes out and says, we're sorry, or we didn't think this through, or we didn't understand the ramifications. We're going to take this back to the drawing board. We're going to rethink it. We're going to talk to our advisory panel. So, I mean, we'll see if they revise this or say, you know, this is just the way it is. Or maybe maybe one of the options is, like, you can opt out. Like, you've got a command uh, on your back end that, you know, you can opt out of these things. And so that nothing gets on your clips, you know? Um, uh, Dan again uh, makes another po good point because again, this is Twitch's problem. You know, start start running ads on your streams, and maybe Twitch can start thinking about can can think about it down the line. Meaning that Twitch half the time streamers bitch about Twitch, but they don't even do what they're supposed to be doing for Twitch, which is hit the goddamn ad button on a regular basis, right? Um, because that's kind of supposed to be the other half of the deal. We're going to give you all this bandwidth. You give us the content. You hit this fancy little ad button for us uh, on a regular. Um, and both sides of this can, can make money. Um, 
Right. Yeah. yeah. One's a big corporation owned by Amazon. So if you think they're really going to care that you're mad about what's on the end of you, their clip, <laughs> got a breach to sell you. All right. Nope. Now Otherwise, we're going to take a quick little commercial break. When we come back, more to talk about. Also answering all your questions at the end. See you in a few. And welcome, everybody, back to The Breakdown. Once again, we're here covering some of the, the news that we at least found interesting. And by we, we mean you guys, because what we like, you like, and that is that. Good to be back here, of course, after the break. And, uh, you know, we talked a, a lot about Twitch. We talked a lot about sort of what's been going on in some of the bigger esports leagues uh, up until now. There has been such an interesting discussion, Scott, uh, on the internet for the last few months uh, regarding... The future of video games now with the rise of Web3 and non-fungible tokens known as NFTs. Uh, what I want to start this off by saying my official position on these is someone that you may know that I, some people might know I'm dabbled because I got fucking ass blasted by a bunch of disgruntled Twitter users when they, when they saw that I tweeted at uh, an NFT account. Uh, I've dabbled with it, but my official position is that they're annoying uh, and people that are obsessed with them are even more annoying. Uh, so I tried to understand it. I kind of get it. And I still think it's kind of in, insane, Scott. I don't know how deep you've gotten here, mate. Do you, you get a bored ape? You're part of the yacht club, homie? <laughs> Dude, I got so many huh? apes. I got so many axes. I got so many mushrooms. I I got dusk. <laughs> I got dusk breaking all this, over this here. Is, I got dusk breaking. This is fellow kids vibes I, right I here. Don't. <laughs> Hello, my fellow kid. No, I um I probably stupidly have uh, ignored this. Uh, as an investor, and I probably shouldn't have or maybe should not continue to. Um, I don't have anything to do with crypto or NFT other than, and Jason, you're going to need the last minute pull up the only coin and crypto that count on the planet. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the esports cruise coin, Mitch. Um, so I don't fuck with the shit coins, right? I don't fuck with them. Uh -huh. We only fuck with the big the coin here. Yeah, the esports cruise right. coin. Um, and, you know, <laughs> I, I'm making the crew scramble right now to get to the website. And Jason's probably like, you motherfucker. Uh, and, but yeah, actual position is, yeah, not really. Uh, obviously, no investment in anything. And, uh, and still a little leery in the sense of probably actually accurately understanding uh, real benefits versus cosmetic benefits versus like the NFT uh -huh. art world versus how the blockchain can change the world. Right. Because, you know, you selling sure. me an ape is not changing anyone's world. But is there a block? You know, so there's lots to talk. Here it is. This is it right here, everyone. <laughs> everyone, don't walk. Run your ass to this website. Esports Cruise Coin. No Scamarino. If you say no okay. Scamarino, it's no Scamarino, folks. Welcome to crypto. OK. Welcome to crypto. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, full disclosure. I actually have a uh, a, a cryptocurrency. Uh, it's called Ubercoin. Uh, and basically, it's just a project with a company called Rally, where oh, yeah, Rally you can tokenize or you can create. Yeah, you can create an economy around uh, exclusives that you offer as a creator. So you know, on there, I you know offer people like you can get Twitch subs uh, through there for like cheaper. So I try to encourage people to sort of transact with this currency, and you know, and and obviously. You know, if they hold on to it, if more people transact with my little creator, you know, cryptocurrency, then the price goes up and people can, you know, buy, sell or whatever. So very much an experiment, um, you know, something I just wanted to just to figure out. It's been fun, but it's not been groundbreaking for me. Oh, here you like go. many, like many. Yeah. So this is this is the, this is the coin. So like 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 many fucking NFT or cryptocurrency based projects. It's interesting. Esports kind of industry curious advice. to see where the tech goes. But it's not changing. Yeah, I mean, I give it out for free on this show. So why the fuck am I selling yeah. that now? I don't e even know. But so I'd like, for example, like I have a cameo where I do shout outs for people. It's like forty bucks per, but you can get it for twenty bucks there. So you know, I'm trying to, I tried to, you know, incentivize people to use it, and it is, it's interesting, right? And there are creators that are way better at using their own economy, their own tokenized economy than I am. I'm just not, not great at it. But it's something that is there, and I guess if I wanted to mint NFTs of me fucking flexing in the gym, I, I guess I could do that, but. God forbid that ever became a thing. So just what you guys know, like I have dabbled in decentralized finance and cryptocurrency with a little bit in NFTs. Good. Still very puzzled by a lot of it. Still feel like a lot of a boomer a lot of the time, but I, I can probably add a little bit of insight to this discussion because Scott, it's now starting to come clashing into the gaming space, yes. right? Yes. Everyone is going NFTs and games. Decentralized blockchain and games is is where it, it's at. It's where it has to be. It's the future, yada yada. Um, I don't know if you saw this. I don't think we have an asset for this, but like 
Square Enix yes. uh, were, uh, had an announcement early this week about how the adoption of NFTs um, uh, you know, might be something they're looking to do. The best part about that is the Final Fantasy XIV player base are the most progressive, the most... Well, they're progressive, but they're anti that kind of progress, right? So they're really against NFTs. They're really against that idea. Uh, they're really against crypto. Generally, as a player base, they're like very... Um, how do I put this? There's a lot of crossover with uh, communities like, you know, uh, they're not, I wouldn't exactly call them core gamers necessarily that play Final Fantasy. They're not like, mm. they're not like COD console gamers, right? They're very progressive politically. Uh, they're very diverse. Uh, and they're very anti anything that could be like art theft or just like damaging the environment, stuff like that. So they fucking hate this. It's the worst player base to market this to. And Square Enix have just gone, well, oh, you know, we might look at doing this. And everyone's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. And they were just. God, they were just looking so good because people start comparing them to Blizzard, right? It was like WoW versus Final Fantasy XIV, and Final Fantasy XIV won out big time, right? They can't even afford to increase their server capacity right now because so many people are trying to get into the, into their game with the release of Endwalker. Anyway, I'm just saying. So this is coming. It's coming to gaming, um, and I, I I appreciate people's resistance to it if they don't if they don't agree with it. Some people have no idea what they're talking about when they get mad at you for for bringing up crypto. Some do. And plenty of people have no fucking idea what they're talking about, Scott, when they're advocating for NFTs in games, which is what we've seen on the old TL this week. Yeah, because we've also had Ubisoft. Was it Ubi that announced they were going to crypto a game and then pulled back out and said, we're not going to crypto it anymore. We're sorry. Bad implementation. We'll go yes. back to the drawing board. So yeah, you, it's just, listen. You got different developers. It's not the time right now. Yeah. It's not the time right now to announce that in your game because your player base are already like they're already hypersensitive to it because they've already been having arguments for fucking yeah. hours with crypto bros on Twitter about it. And they're bringing that same vitriol straight to you without, you know, having that same discussion again. So just if you're a game developer and you talk about NFTs, you're going to get fucking ass blasted by the furries, by a lot of sort of, you know, progressive gamer types. So just just be aware. Yeah, probably don't do it right now. And what we want to talk about today, because what, what bounced in the timeline, um, was a game developer, uh, X Bungie, now independent, uh, Cortana V's uh, Twitter timeline, had a really mm -hmm. interesting kind of breaking it down as a game developer of like what you think you want as an NFT bro and crypto bro for your game to do for you, but really how incredibly impossible yeah. sharing the hat is or sharing the helmet across games is. Um, you know, this content you deem you must have and own is not so easy to actually have you have and own across this fantastical gaming metaverse you envision. Um, yes. And it makes some very valid points, you know, we'll scroll through it a little bit because part of it, you're reading it and going, are these people like taking the piss out of these developers when they ask, because it's very entitled. When will you decentralize and give ownership of your game studio to your users? What the fuck? And he goes on. No, seriously. Yeah. How would you do that with a SQL server? Well, of course you... Uh, how are you going to guarantee that your server stays up forever? It can't be tampered with. How will you clear that with regulators? How will you fucking breathe tomorrow? What <clears throat> weird fucking questions. Like, where is your entitlement that the little bit of money you paid for my game means that you A, own it forever, and B, actually own it, depending on what you think ownership means? Very, very weird. And obviously Cortana jumps in here and it's okay, like, so, yeah, go ahead. You jump in. No, I mean, look, you're, you're dead right. And I think like um, there's a big divide here because games, right, video games at their core are artistic endeavors, right? Yep. And there is a tendency when artistic endeavors meet financialization for the soul of the artistic endeavor to be fucking ripped out, all right? Uh, and this is what a lot of people are saying. Like, have you seen what the average NFT looks like, Scott? It's a monkey. Right, and they're all derivatives of each other. So, board eight, board eight yacht club, or, or rather, CryptoPunks is the most successful, probably because it was really the first NFT. Right, and a lot of NFTs are valued based on you know strength of their community, the speculation of the price of them, and the roadmap by the developers. What they're trying to fucking do with these things, right? Cortana continues to go on here and, and, and talk about the actual details of how you would implement uh, NFTs and decentralization into a game engine, into an existing game engine. Really hard to do to make that conversion for like a ton of reasons. The first of all, first one being someone asks, when will this item in this game be transferable to the, the metaverse? When can I wear this in the metaverse? Can't, what fucking metaverse? Everyone has their own <laughs> yeah. metaverse, right? 
there's there's fucking uh, Decentraland. Roblox is a literal metaverse, right? Because you can make a bunch of games inside it. The engine's there, right? Most metaverses are some shitty crypto voxels, fucking low poly walkthrough, you know, gimmicky thing. No one has, as far as I understand, like a, a truly all encompassing metaverse, and everyone, Scott, wants to make one. Even Facebook changed their name. Like Facebook, yeah. what are they going to try and create the standard metaverse? Who says my metaverse is better than your metaverse? I see NFTs get sold all the time. Like, great example is one called the World Wide Web with double Bs, right? And they're selling property. They're selling literal virtual penthouses and towers and stuff in their metaverse. But motherfucker, you can't take the tower you bought in the World Wide Web and and, and own it in Decentraland or Second Life or wherever the fuck you want. Yep, yep. So no one has a consensus on, on who whose metaverse is the one and everybody wants their metaverse to be the one because, you know what I mean? Because that, that's where the, the money is to be made. So that's a big problem. Uh, it comes up in chat as well that technically CSGO and IFs are NFTs because they're transferable, right? Couple things that they don't do. Um, the, so, the, so, so technically it's an NFT because it's a transferable asset that has utility, Scott, right? It, it's a different animation in game. It looks different, right? So that's the utility of a knife. Mm -hmm. It can be transferred to other users, by a secure protocol, not entirely secure all of the time, right? But the money that you sell the knife for lives inside the Steam marketplace or your wallet and cannot be withdrawn for fiat currency, right? You cannot sell your knife for $150 in game and via legitimate methods, take $150 out of your Steam wallet and go and fucking spend it on icy poles or whatever. That's not a thing. So that's why, I mean, it wasn't truly, but the idea is there, right? And you know, if I'm ever trying to explain an NFT to someone, not evangelize it, but trying to yeah. you know, set, you know, explain it to them, I, I start with that concept. But who the fuck? Why? Why are people asking when your game developer studio is going to be chopped up digitally and, and ownership handed out to other people? That's not really how it works. Like, you know, all these solutions that people are asking for, all these things that people are saying the NFTs do. Like, who asked for this? The only people that are asking for this to be done to games are people that already hold NFTs and want the fucking value of their NF NFTs to increase yeah. by a mass adoption. That is the only reason why you want these convoluted things to happen. There are tons of games that are being developed for, you know, for a decent decentralized games, right? That's fine. Go make a decentralized game. I played um I played Axie Infinity, yeah? Okay. Uh it is it's kind of like a Think JRPG, right? We have a team of guys and they all do their moves and then the enemy team does their moves and whoever's faster goes first. And it's, it's like that, right? It's fine. It's really expensive to get into if you want to start a team that is acceptable. It's like 800 US dollars, right? You get three little fucking cloud mush looking things with certain traits that make them, that give them certain abilities, right? Those abilities are the ones you use to, to beat your opponents. But Scott, the game is so fucking bare bones. Yeah. I literally, I got the axes and then it's like, okay, here's some single player, here's some single player missions you have to go through. Here's a campaign. It's really hard uh, to get through. And it doesn't give you anything really except something called SLP, which is like the, the super love potion, whatever it's called. That The SLP is what you can change for currency. And then it has an arena mode where you just go up against random opponents and you beat them. That's it. The game's got, it's just, this, it's a soulless fucking game, Scott. It's so bare bones and people are like touting it as the future. But by the time that game is going to get remotely built out functionally, there's going to be a million others just like it. Yeah. Parallel yeah. Uh, is a card game that exists on the NFT, uh, on the blockchain, on the Ethereum blockchain. So that's the first problem. Hmm. Motherfucker, if you want to trade your parallel cards with other people, they're beautiful, right? They're animated. Some There's different rarities. The art is incredible. If you want to trade cards, you have, to, you have to conduct a transaction on the Ethereum blockchain. Very expensive in terms of power usage and it costs gas, right? Won't be a problem necessarily. Whenever the fuck Ethereum moves to a proof of uh, a proof of stake consensus model, which for those at home, it just means that it's not going to be nearly as power use. So basically, instead of using half of Portugal's power draw uh, yearly, uh, the Ethereum blockchain will use like Wikipedia's power draw. So it will get get a lot better. But can we it get doesn't our video cards now? I'm we, ranting. Can we order our video cards now? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Maybe the video cards start to get back into circulation. But I just. You know, it's just people are trying to make try, people are trying to inflate the value of the NFTs that are already owned by like pushing for their adoption everywhere. And people are like, we didn't ask for this. Would it be nice, Scott, if my Valorant in-game items I could like resell them later on for a profit? That'd be nice. But not everyone gives a fuck. Not everyone's so enterprising. Do I? I mean, I mean, if I could sell my fucking my my Vandal skins that I don't use and then get other Vandal skins that I want, 
it'll be fine for me. Yeah, I don't need yeah. to make money playing Valorant. You play games to play games. You play games to make money. And that's why this whole um, this whole play to earn model that people are touting, they're trying to push here, this idea that you would get paid money for playing these video games, that's fine. But make your own new games for that shit. Don't change my games already because the problem with pay to earn is that all of a sudden the barrier to entry becomes sky high in these games yeah right you want to be on an even playing field with top players you have to spend tons of money it's fucking dog shit just leave my games alone do it in your own i'm ranting sorry rant over so where do you see then like where does this technology it seems like this technology is just trying to be jammed in every place possible some places it might fit some places it absolutely doesn't but it's just being tech broed into it where do you see Outside of the cosmetics of, again, like buying the sure. piece of art and the investment side of that, scam or not, right-click, save or not, where do you see mm -hmm. blockchain, NFT, crypto when it comes to video games? It, it, where do you see that actually being a good fit? Where is it useful? Uh, you know, like, as in, in, what kind of, in what kind of genre? Yeah, like where would it be well, useful? So, for example, You're going to build – I'm going to give yeah, you so $5 million. Uh, build me the crypto – game and what is it and why does it need to be on crypto why does it I need mean, to be on blockchain maybe if it's full maybe if it's full dive virtual reality scott and you can like do things that you wouldn't be able to do it in the normal world like maybe in an mmo genre right mm. it could be good mm. um where like you know people spend a huge amount of time in an mmo to get a house or to get the gear they want or, or whatever right but mmos have the, the underpinning uh sort of qualities of having really engaging gameplay loops right outside of the fucking mercantile side of the game right like the combat is you know compelling or the, the storyline really draws you in it's 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 great to play with your friends right the 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 cosmetic side of things all this extra it's always just extra stuff yep it doesn't it doesn't interfere with the actual core gameplay itself because when it starts to interfere with the core gameplay itself and then you let people a, a free market decide the price of this you have to pay to even experience the game in its fullness yeah so I, my, per, my, my personal opinion, Scott, is that it doesn't belong in video games at all. Okay. Right? Per, okay. It just doesn't. I, I, you know, <laughs> my, I just, I, I don't, I have yet, I'm yet to see a model that really seems great for it. Like, EVE Online is a fantastic game in concept, right? Um, it's a game where you can get whatever you want without paying for it. Uh, and, and in general, it's actually kind of hard to, to pay. Uh, you can buy ships, I guess, but like, you wouldn't do it. You can, you do things in the game. Like, you might, you might shuttle uh, freight cargo for people in the game and get paid in game with the in game currency to do that. Or maybe you just like, you'd like want to be a part of a pirate fleet. It's a great game with so many possibilities that almost nobody gets to that part of it because they get overwhelmed mm. by it. You know what I mean? When you start, we start, what happened? <laughs> here, here you go. There was a free market in, in, in New World recently, Scott. Basically, what happened is that, you know, like it, it, was, it was an auction house, right? You buy and sell most of the stuff you get in the game. The problem is, is that in New World, the game wasn't awarding the player enough currency for doing in-game activities, right? At the end game, you weren't getting enough gold from doing repeatable end game stuff because Outpost Rush at the time was disabled or whatever. This sparked a massive deflationary crisis in the game because gold was way more valuable than the things you could actually get with it. Oh. So the markets just shat themselves, right? There was no incentive <laughs> to collect materials to go and chop down trees to go and make stuff. People just... People wouldn't buy. They wouldn't pay for even this crazy armor that you made because the in-game economy was fucked up. What, what happened in World of Warcraft yeah. when gold selling was such a problem, right? Yeah. That there was like an interface between the, the game and fiat worlds where you could you could buy a WoW token in-game with gold and then that could be sold. On, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you could actually get money for that. So many problems with it. There's no... I don't think there's... I, I, I don't... Hey, I, I don't see where it's really going to improve my gaming experience as I right now know it because I play video games to get away from the rat race of having to fucking pay money. I live in fucking California for Christ's sake. Like it slaps me in the face every day how I have to pay money to, to breathe, you know, with the taxes in this country, which is fine. I'll pay for your fucking Medicare Americans. That's fine. But I don't know if I need the financial universe to pervade my escapism in gaming to the degree that it does. Now I have, I have NFTs. I do. I have some, I got some cause I want to see if it'd be interesting. I got, uh, so Henry G's project, it's a bunch of fucking, it's a bunch of fucking toadstools that walk around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you have one, the, the, the idea is, is that it can be like Nintendogs. You know how, you know, relaxing it was like Nintendogs, like you have a dog, a virtual dog and you pet it. It's like a fucking Tamagotchi for Christ's sake. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
that's kind of what they have envisioned for that. I'm like, that's interesting. You know what I mean? It's like, I'll have a fungus, then I'll go pet, or I'll give it some fucking fertilizer or some shit, and maybe I can battle other players in PvP with it, and I'll see what it's like. But I'm yet to see a compelling model for a video game that's tied in with decentralized finance. Um, I don't think, I don't really understand why it's so necessary. And I'll tell you what it does. It just makes it harder for the average person to enjoy the game in its fullest. You only get, you, you have yeah. to unlock the game with money. I just, just that doesn't make sense to me, Scott. I don't know about you, but I, I don't, I don't see it. No, and, and again, I just, yeah, I've been trying to figure out, you know, where, you know, you see these things like, oh no, a smart contract would make cheating obsolete and would make this go away, and then I'm like, I don't know, you know, okay, maybe, maybe, yeah, I mean, smart maybe, contracts are good you because know? you don't, it, like, the idea is you don't need, an, a, you don't need an entity in the middle, Scott, yeah, to like a, to agree that this person's sending money to this account, right? It, it, it's self fulfilling. So the idea. That decentralized currency finance can drive a trustless uh, world is actually a very good thing. Just not for the banks. The banks go out of business because their job is literally go, yep, this account's sending money here and it's going over there, yep, right? Yep. You eliminate you eliminate the middle person. So there'd be no credit card fees. There'd be none, none of that bullshit, right? It also means that technically governments wouldn't be able to just print money and basically expropriate wealth from the, the poor to the rich by propping up big companies with stuff like quantitative easing thereby hmm. fucking with the value of a currency because it's not backed by anything that's scarce right we used to be on the gold standard in the united states uh so right so the, the currency was backed by a verifiable quantity of gold which is verifiably scarce that means that the value of your currency stayed strong now you guys just print it just print it and all that the more money in circulation means the money that's already there is worth less and less and less and less and they're doing that right now to try and buy bonds from failing companies because they don't want the economy to crash during the pandemic. So I do think decentralized finance is very important. And especially if you want to escape the cycle of, you know, governments fucking with currencies, then it's worth considering. But in my gaming world, really? Yeah. Like, give me a fucking break. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. I'm glad we have an expert on the panel, too. <laughs> Dude, I, yeah. Keep us I think about this shit all the time because I'm trying to pay for my kids' college. Like, I can't do it. I'm just, I can't, I can't do it with tournament organizers trying to lowball me all the time. I have to look into this <laughs> shit, you know? Well, I mean, that being said, you know, this is a one-of-a-kind, unreal 3D world. So right now, for you folks at home, I'm going to go ahead and sell this TV, this digital representation of my yep. lower third TV. Oh, not that TV. Jason has said I can sell this VCR. This VCR right here could be yours, but you can't have it. It'll just sit here, but it's yours. We'll put a sticker It'll on the back. just have your name on it, though. We'll put your name on it. Yeah. Um, and then maybe for you, maybe like one of the audio components down below your TV, we'll put on the market. Uh, Ironically, Scott, asset. you are you're you're on an XR stage right now, <laughs> uh, which which you know you're you are living in as much of a metaverse as I've seen so far, created by these goons on the internet for their for their for their monkey avatars to live in. You're in the metaverse, homie. In I fact, am in the I metaverse. am in the metaverse because I'm not even physically in that fucking studio, homie. <laughs> Literally, fifty Ethereum to put your face on this screen. All right, hit me up. We'll work it out. I can do it easily. I'll just do it here on OBS. I'll just send. I'll just send a picture of your face instead of mine. We can make this happen. All right, let's go. Real estate, baby. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let's move on. Next topic. Uh, am I doing this one? I think. Yeah, we're gonna get into the Valorant news of the week. We got a couple little Valorant things. Um, well, one. I think obviously yeah. uh, Neon dropped her trailer today. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. I don't think we're showing that today. That's awesome. But very very cool. Yeah. Just uh, literally. her voice actor is like le legit. Like Tagalog English speaking, yeah, uh, great. Filipina, fucking fantastic. Um, yeah, I think the game designer like tweeted out, like, yeah, here's my Filipinex character that I worked on, and everyone lost their mind and changed it to Filipino. Oh, like, Jesus. You know, like, people putting X at the end of shit, like, <laughs> yeah, people are losing their minds of that shit. Don't do that, by the way. Just, just, I know you're trying to be inclusive, but the, the people who those names <laughs> actually apply to generally fucking hate it. Yeah. So just, just you're, you're not helping them. Shit, uh, so yeah, really good trailer though. Um, and obviously you guys talked, we'll talk about it next week on Valoranting. Obviously you're talking mm -hmm, about it this mm -hmm. week. Um, cause it started, it leaked yeah. basically Amazon leaked the whole thing, which is kind of funny. Uh, yeah. let's talk about other Valorant news. You guys also talked about, uh, yesterday on the show, Valoranting every Tuesdays on the do not peak network. Um, and this is a coach, um, basically deporting is the wrong word he didn't get deported from brazil because he never got let into brazil ideally right walk us through this story you're familiar with it more than me and then we'll um, get into it a little bit yeah no he got deported from brazil he was in brazil 100 so this i, man, I didn't uh, think he made it past the airport uh, so yeah uh, okay yeah maybe so he might have gotten turned back around that's that's quite possible this guy 
Um, coach of the greatest team to come out of Latin America, right? Crew Esports, who beat Sentinels and they beat Fnatic um, at Champions. Legit team. This guy, as far as we know, legit coach, right? Um, you know, good looking guy, in great shape and, and really runs a tight ship with his team. Um, this individual though, yeah, obviously he sort of doesn't agree with the, the vaccination passport that some countries are you know, requiring. Brazil recently uh, has just required this. That's what actually precipitated a tweet from uh, Riot in Brazil. They're like esports person saying you have to be vaxxed if you want to compete in our land events for VCT challenges. So, um, Ono, not a fan of that. Um, and as we're sort of discovering, this is the kind of person with, um, you know, we've seen more and more people over the last few weeks sort of show some opinions that are definitely not, you know, publicly sort of um, palatable, you know, but again, when you're trying to serve up your opinions to other gamers on Twitter and, and 280 characters or less, like you're asking for it. So yeah, this guy obviously was picked up by the, the biggest team in Brazil. Loud is a huge, Scott, look at how many fucking followers they've got, like millions. Yeah. Huge esports organization. Um, But with Brazil changing to requiring a vaccination passport, this guy's like, well, I don't believe in this. So I'm, I'm not no longer working with this team. He literally, you know, because of his beliefs and because he was unwilling to sort of compromise on those, I, as far as I can tell, has thrown away what would have to be the biggest opportunity of his career so far. Pretty insane. Uh, and obviously, he's a bit of a character. Um, this is going to need a bit of contextualization, but Mitch Man had a bit of a story to share about this guy. Oh, no, the great is his Twitter handle. That's how you refer to Rodrigo is his name. Because uh, he was obviously at Masters Berlin with crew. Want to make it very clear before this airs, this was hearsay. Mitch is embellishing a little bit because I'm fucking hell. Like, we're, we're TMZ over on Valoranting sometimes. But here's the story. Uh, listen in. So he, <laughs> apparently, he had to put security outside his door because he refused to quarantine. Then he apparently, and these are the an exact quote. Can't even remember who told me it, but it was uh, he tried to fight them um, because he didn't You're agree that he had to stay inside uh, to isolate during the isolation um so <laughs> sorry sorry so, yeah. sorry sorry go back a little bit he tried to fight the security detail yeah. that was posted in front of his door that would okay so this this is a story that came out uh obviously you know plenty plenty of rumors i've heard this one before though i heard this rumor not from mitch but by someone different but uh mr damagro sort of refutes this on reddit says that okay well there was no fighting uh, we were told to get stuck mm. in our rooms. I'm a non-violent individual. Um, as we uncover his sort of political views, there's, there's some you know truth to that. Basically, he has a very specific standpoint um, about that. But uh, yeah, there were cameras in the hall, right? So sort of prove it. It's a denial, right? Now, I know this guy was difficult, though, because I've heard from multiple people that he was just a little bit hard to handle. And obviously, he, he sort of <clears throat> doesn't like the, the... He doesn't believe in vaccinations. I don't know if he's vaccin vaccinated or not, but I know a lot of people that were actually in Berlin, Scott, weren't vaxxed. They, okay. they, they weren't. Okay. There are anti-vaxxers, Scott, on North American pro Valorant teams. Some of them were there. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, you, you can sort of work back from there. So, yeah, look, obviously, this may or may not be true, uh, but it is an example of someone. I, th I just thought it was interesting because the guy had the, the greatest team to come out of South America in Valorant. You know what I mean? And he was going to get picked up for a new ambitious project with the roster loud with a few players from, from Vikings, which is a Brazilian team. And it was looking really, really good. Uh, and yeah, wasn't having it. He was, uh, freedom does not triumph apparently Scott. And so, uh, he's, he's, he will exercise his freedom by allowing himself to be deported and yeah, looking for other opportunities. He tweets later on, he's looking for orgs to hire him as a coach that won't require him to have a vaccination passport. It's a little bit hard to understand what he what his what his stance is. He seems like he's accept, he accepts vaccinations, but he won't get it done himself. But he doesn't want a vax passport. It's it's very confusing. It's news in the Valorant scene because first of all, I mean, I I think he, I personally think his opinion is a dog shit. But that's just a personal take, right? Yeah. The guy claims that he's an anarcho capitalist, which is a branch of right libertarianism, which is you know which is a mindset that has suffered a great amount of criticism. And again, you know, his t he he had takes, by the way, on women in esports, Scott, and they were just the same as what we were seeing from a lot of their big detractors. Mm. It was like, mm. there's, there's, like, I would never scream a woman's team because they're just not as good, you know, uh, to paraphrase that. All of his tweets require a translation, but yeah. I thought this was up there for like a pretty, uh, a contestant for dumb tweet of the week yeah. because of what has had to happen. Good on him, he stuck to his gun, Scott, but I just, yeah, why over this? This is the hill you're going to die on, okay. 
Okay. Yeah, and and obviously there was some back and forth on that Reddit thread uh, between him and Mitch Mann. They clarified some stuff. Mitch Mann came out and said, okay, you know, um, let me clarify what I heard and what I was trying to say. Maybe fought was kind of the wrong way to put it. Maybe it was more that you were difficult and you, you know, you know, not necessarily physically fighting, but more like you were argumentative and you were probably fighting against the protocols and being locked in, which is probably true. I'm sure he was snarky to people. Now, whether he was snarky to the security guard, you know, he says the guy didn't understand English. They, you know, whatever. They didn't speak to each other. So uh, they obviously talked about it. He does say I may have been difficult. Um, it does read, everything I tried to catch up on is he's not just against the passport issue of, you know, proving that you're vaccinated. He's not vaccinated and he doesn't want to get vaccinated. Now that to me is more mind blowing then, like, okay, I don't want to have to prove it. Like, they're both weird. They're both absolutely weird to me. Yeah. Like, as long as he stays the fuck the away from me, shot. though, Scott, whatever. Right. Get the fucking shot. Yeah. And why do you care about proving it? Right. Like, I'm sorry you got all the way to the airport and they didn't let you in the country um, and you had to get turned around and you never got to sign your contract and you didn't get the gig. Um, but, like, this is a bed that you very much laid in. You can get the shot. You're, you know, you're not telling me stuff like your doctors told you not to get the shot because you have medical issues that might be detrimental to getting vaccine. Because there are people oh, that have that so issue. Cool. Like you're, you, you want to be opposed to it? So be it. You're, you're going to have a hard time in the next couple years finding a fucking coaching gig in any esport that is traveling the world doing LAN events that any team is going to invest in you because you he even tweeted like. Well, there's lots of people. On, this is me paraphrasing his translation, but basically, someone asked him, like, "Okay, who's going to hire you if you can't travel?" Right? And he says, "Well, basically, teams have more than one person. No one does it alone. Someone else would go." Oh, cool. I'm going to pay you a shitload of money to be my head coach, and then you're not going to go to all the fucking events that I need you to be at. Yep. But hey, that's fine. It's his choice. I like, this I'm, for I'm, sale, yeah. too. We're going to sell this, too? I don't yeah. fucking know, man. Sell the, I don't, sell the TV. I don't fucking no, know. No, look, man. I mean, look, it's fine. Yeah, it, dude, it's a dumb take. I just think it's stupid not to want to get vaccinated. But really, like, yeah, I, I also, if I believe in individual liberty, I, you know, I have to accept that he won't get it. Just stay away from me. That's all. Yeah. You it, have to stay away from me. Yeah. It, <laughs> and, and again, a lot. Stay away from people that want you to stay away from me. Yeah. They live on a farm. And, and, and again, because this this thing crosses over to it's not just about you and your body, right? Because that's a there's a whole lot of thing about me, my body, what I want to do with it. You're right. But that thing you're carrying could get to me and could get to my mom and get to, you know. Yes. So it is yes. about but all of care. us in a way, right? Like we're all fucking wearing masks here again. We don't want to be fucking wearing yeah. them again. His but individual hey. liberty is more important <laughs> than your fucking health, mate. That's the reality. He doesn't give a shit if you get up from him and get sick. He couldn't care less. No. And, and, he just doesn't care. And again, teach your own. Like, this is a fuck around and found out, find out moment. You fucked around. You've now found yeah, out, yeah, yeah. you know, good luck with your employment. Um, don't wish, you know, unemployment on anyone. But, like, good luck. The world we live in, like, just announced today, yeah, Mayo yeah. Clinic exactly. fired 700 fucking medical people because they didn't get vaccinated. Mayo fucking Clinic. Like, see ya. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Riot's going to care like, that I'm you're not, not I'm vaccinated. I'm not praying on his downfall. Yeah. You know? I'm not praying for his downfall. I just think he's a douche. He's a douche. And this is yes. my dumb tweet of the week. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's my submission. Yeah, we well. talked about That's having right. a dumb tweet of the week segment. It's working out that we actually have one. Um, anyway, so yep. we'll keep an eye on his career and see if he does, you know, get signed by somebody. Uh, uh, or maybe he changes his mind. Maybe, but maybe, <laughs> maybe you know, his strong beliefs magically change when he's got to pay the rent. We'll see. Um, or maybe not. Because um, that's when you find out what you're really made of. Um, uh, mm. If you decide to take the paycheck and, you know, compromise your morals. Um, all right. Next. Next. Uh, well, this isn't a crazy tweet of the week. This is a crazy clip of the week. Let's just roll, just roll this it. fucking clip and talk about the rage quit we'll of the week. We'll explain it after. So if you're not familiar right, so with. I can me, talk over this. Yes, please do. Sorry. So this is Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the New York Jets, baby. Uh, over in Jersey, I guess is where the Jets play. That's Antonio Brown down there. Really famous, infamous uh, wide receiver. Uh, I think. I don't think he's running back. Wide receiver. Um, great footballer. He's on a team with Tom Brady. So he's on a literal Super Bowl winning team. And he right now is uh, disrobing and leaving the field during an in-progress game. This guy is... Uh, 
considered by many to be a football superstar. Uh, and he's he's catching throws from literal Tom Brady. So that's the gravity of the situation. At the time of this recording, they're also getting fucked on by the Jets, who are a horrendous team this year. Not quite as bad as the Giants, but pretty fucking dog shit. And he's just, he's leaving. He's fucking out of there, Scott. See you later. Yeah, and like there's a play going on. He's just like taking it all off, walking away. And uh, you know, trying to catch up and read what happened behind the scenes. Obviously, there was some altercations with him and the coaching staff. Um, and they wanted him to go back in the game. And again, I might be getting some of this wrong. He's coming off an injury, but healthy, but he didn't want to play. Uh, or didn't want to go back in because he played part of that game, and they said go back in. He said, I don't want to go back in. I don't feel like going back in. They said, you need to go back in. They said, I'm not going back in. He said, if you don't go back in, you're not on the team. He said, I'm not on the team then. Fuck you. Started taking his clothes off. Um, so I don't know. Yep. It, 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 that in isolation is like, oh, shit, if this guy is really injured and he's feeling it and he shouldn't be playing but his coaching staff is forcing him that's a dangerous situation right obviously nfl ctes all this fucking shit but then you just start looking at the resume of this player and by resume i mean <laughs> all the fucking crazy shit that has happened in this guy's very short career go you all need to read this it's as it scrolls short, by really and, it, and not that short yeah, okay so it's pretty it's pretty crazy, but yeah, like, and obviously, yeah, the coach, obviously, uh, Bruce Arians says that, you know, he was, um, he didn't know that, you know, he was injured. He said, like, if we were trying to put him in the game and he wouldn't go into the game, so we told him to, to get off the field. So this is a few things. Right? A couple that I noticed, obviously, you know, this guy is insane. Like, he's crazy. He turned up to the Raiders training camp in a hot air balloon. That's fucking baller, When he went dude. to try out for the Saints, he turned up with a full film crew to shoot a music video after being already told not to fucking do it. I uh, tried to fight a teammate, called him a cracker, and had to be held back by a teammate, then punted the football down the practice field and said, find me for that. Well, guess what? He got, got fined for, for that. I love that. The guy is, <laughs> yeah, the guy is out there and obviously sort of excuse the inclusion of the uh, the R word here in this sort of list everybody else yes, please. Off, uh, we've, we've curated. But um, this guy is uh, obviously pretty out there. And it's a little bit sad because he's clearly struggling. Like he's yep. definitely struggled over the course of his career with his sort of mental state. And, uh, you know, th so there's a lighthearted and less lighthearted part to this, uh, I think. The fact that the system enables this guy to go from team to team and do the most unreal stuff. Currently, of course, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, I think he has a warrant, he had a warrant for his arrest and stuff like that. Homework on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, he went back to college. He said it was quitting football, went back to back to school, tried to outsource his homework. Then he said it was going back to the NFL like a couple, t you know, two oh, weeks later. No more white women 2020. I mean, that's just standard rhetoric we see Started on, on training on for a Twitter boxing from, match with Logan Paul. Left, so. Called out Robert Kraft for his yeah, rub I mean, and tug massage. That's good. That's when he played for the Patriots. Yeah, so fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, so this guy obviously threw a bag of gummy candy dicks at the cops in a video he posted. Uh, so there you go. Turned up to uh, jail after having an arrest warrant with his suit on. You love to see that. But teams, teams sort of obviously a lot of teams have signed this player. I mean, generally, what I understand is he is uh, an incredible, uh, incredibly good player. He's a very good footballer. Yep. Uh, and I think, you know, this is why obviously he's getting signed a whole bunch here. But do we have an esports equivalent of this, Scott? Would they even be able to get away with a tenth of this? Oh, hell no. Hell, I mean, I... I... I don't know. I, I start to, you know, you start thinking about troublesome players or like, you know, controversial players. And frankly, I think I might have dealt with two of the most in the sense of like the shit that Greg used to say, Idra, for those at home, StarCraft player, played for EG. Like he yep. used to get himself and us in a whole lot of trouble on a regular basis with his mouth. Um, Huck said a few things less controversial, but just more spicy, right? Especially when they fought each other about shit. Yep. Um, but I mean, Greg kind of rage quit a match once, but like, fuck, I don't like to the extent of like getting up and walk like that was that's crazy. Um, but yeah, insane shit. Uh, and then at the very end of that list that we we cut away from right at the end, also faked having a covid vaccination card. So that's apropos for the conversation of today. Got caught for it, obviously. Um, so he's also a little anti-vax, um, which is kind of, you know. Is what yeah, it I mean, is. I mean, if you're also like, if you, who knows what it is in the NFL, right? I mean, fucking, sorry, but like Aaron Rodgers, uh, you know, claimed that he was immunized, and when people asked him what that meant, it meant that he was naturally immune to COVID, <laughs> yeah. not that he had had shots. So he misled, he misled a bunch of people that he had been vaxxed. I, I, like, you, I'm, you get some larger than life people here. 
Uh, these, these guys are just uh, these guys are just out there. Anyway, it was interesting news this week because I was watching the game and I just couldn't believe it. And again, it is sports ball, but I just it occurred to me that no one in esports would get away with this because of how beholden to the fan base so many of pros are. Maybe some COD guys are able to transcend that and kind of be as ridiculous as they want, but it always comes crashing back down. You know, yeah, the, it, the, the fan base, the strength of the fan base is strong enough to keep you accountable, I think, a lot of the time. Even if you have dog shit opinions, like what we saw earlier from uh, our sort of uh, friend Rodrigo, eventually, like, people still let you know, you know. Yeah. You're it, beholden to the fan base and to Twitter. Oh, yeah. And, and even with Greg, like, you know, when he crossed the line, like, he, his, his, his fan base even was like, okay, that, that's too much even for you, Greg. You can't tell... Yeah. The Blizz developer that you know he should be raped with a tire iron. That's just not really appropriate. So let alone what his bosses That's had to unreal. say to him, right? The shitty or or getting up and like you know ra- you know GGing out of a match early shit like that. He definitely did that in his career, right? And it's like you you can't fucking quit like that. And his fans would be like, why are you quitting? That's unprofessional, you know. And obviously in StarCraft there is a world where you uh, know you cannot win and you do GG. There that is a that's a actually yeah. a I'm told that time. is a professional yeah. thing to do to GG. It is man. It is it is bad mannered not to GG. Yeah, like sometimes if your you know. if your pro blind gets ruined, but yeah, yeah you, but you might GG. But right. he would like, just be like fucking about. Fuck. Be like, Where are you going? Sit back yeah. now, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Yeah. Um, especially because he got fucked a there few times for doing it. People that came from yeah, that anyways, world, right? Good times. Like yeah, like Huck Todd also <laughs> is is it was very <laughs> spicy in his days. He was a Warcraft three player that played some Starcraft as well. But I remember like. Uh, you know, he eventually ended up working on broadcasts and the guy hiring him was Mark Alberts, who used to work at Blizzard. Oh, yeah, but yeah. Mark was one of the guys that had to deal with Todd when back when Mark was like a, a tournament ops, like a game admin, dealing with Todd, like literally, you'd have to like sign to attest what the result of a, a match was yep. sometimes, right? Todd got ruined by some guy and he had to sign it. But instead of signing the sheet that Mark gives him, he tears it up and throws it back in his face. <laughs> you know? Uh, so there are obviously uh, back in the day, we had a lot of classic gamer moments there. Hopefully they're getting died out. But yeah. there's definitely a high standard of behavior, I think, expected and often displayed by many of our esports professionals, even if they just keep their their bullshit sort of um, philosophies and ideologies sort of, you know, hidden. That's that's fine yep. by me, you know what I mean? Because yep. they're, they're going to get dumped on. But uh, yeah. Yeah, Antonio. I thought, thought, thought it was interesting. To, to bring up uh, Antonio Brown, and I think there's definitely like a, a less light side to that as well. As you know, he might be struggling and all that sort of stuff. We don't just want to make fun of it, but it was the ridiculous piece of news from the week. I want to fucking talk about it because you know we don't just talk about games here, Scott. Not all the time, yep. anyway. Yep. I mean, it's a rage quit in a way, um, or a rage firing. So uh, that's kind of it for the main topic. So we are going to roll to our little question and answers. I'm not sure if we got any questions today. Let me take. Oh, we do got a couple. Let's see here. Um, all right, let's get our first question in from Happy Money. What was the best? Well, okay, what was the best rage quit you've ever seen? Happy Money. Well, see, I worked for EG, so like none of these things I just mentioned were happy for me. Like you know, for the other team, they were great, but like watching Idra rage quit um, was really disheartening every time. <laughs> so I uh, I'd have to think about that one more. Do you have one that you liked? I know. I mean, I love watching Ninja Rage quit. He used to fucking do it all the time. Oh, I, yeah, I guess in that <laughs> yeah, sense, yeah. I, I think, oh, dude, oh, God, it, was, it wasn't not that long ago. It was, like, last year, Ninja was playing League of Legends. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And he rage quit five minutes into a ranked match on stream, bro. <laughs> they were losing at, like, a, a bot lane duo. And I think his, like, his support was feeding. He was playing Trist, I want to say. Uh, <laughs> And you know they were just getting put. I think they were playing against like a bruiser bot lane. They had like a, a, a like a, a pantheon or something like that to play against. But yeah, five minutes in, he just fucking rage quit the guy. I fucking I was dead. It was so funny. I mean, that's mine. I guess that counts, right? That I don't see count. too many in Overwatch. Everyone's too mild mannered in Overwatch, you know. Yeah, yeah. And in Counter Strike on the pro level, you know, they're not obviously rage quitting. They're finishing out matches and stuff. I, I, I don't scrim or pug or anything more. I'd say probably me would be rage quitting on a regular basis like I used to. Like, fuck this game. Um, All right, next question. Let's see what we got. Sorry I didn't have a better answer for you there. Is there any eSport events you're looking forward to in 2022, Blaze 420? YOLO, MLG. Mm. Uh, Ah. I mean, I'm obviously looking forward to Counter-Strike continuing to be back into arenas. Um, You know, Blast is firing on all cylinders. Uh, ESL getting ready to kick back up. We don't know if Flashpoint's coming back or what they might be doing. Um, 
there's all obviously a lot of talk about we play in a major. So like, if they were to get one of our next mm. majors, that would be really intriguing. Okay, um, their stage, their stage design and, and production yeah. value are really good. So I'm looking forward I mean, to that. They about, also I mean, know it and they like to brag about it, and they like to say that people copied oh, them when uh, other people come up. If with we nice it, if we had so a sh if we would have a show live, then that week would have been spicy because that motherfucker got out of line. Yeah, he was very yeah, egotistical. He was an asshole. Um, I, speaking of money laundering companies, I, they spend a lot of money on their production. I still wonder how the fuck they can monetize that. But maybe it's a uh, build it, mm. build it, and they will come model over there still. Mm. Um, I, I'm sure they're all yeah. legitimate business people in Eastern Europe and, and the CIS region, Scott. I, yeah, I'm sure they're, they're all about board. You know, I want to see. I want to see the first Overwatch Two land. I think um, you know it's been said that we're going to get Overwatch mm. Two uh, esports um, for the Overwatch League here. So. And hopefully we get a land if this if we don't have like twenty seven more different variants uh, with varying degrees of virulence by then. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. I also want to see Valorant's first Masters event of 2022 because mm. they they have to show us something big because it was not an ambitious roadmap that they really had for this year, Scott. It was slight tweaks on what they had last year in 2021. I want to see them really hit the ground running with a very strong land showing off the bat, and that will be that first Masters event this year. So. I think a lot of eyes are on on Riot to see how they try and come out strong and show that they are, uh, they have aspirations of being the top tax shooter, uh, yeah. you know, game or you know, top esports still uh, in, in this era. So very curious to see how they capitalize on the relative success of twenty twenty one. Yeah, again, fantastic debut album, if you will, for them. And now their sophomore effort, their next year comes into play, and now we'll really see what kind of band they are. There's my rock and roll analogy. Yep. Nice. Because most software I like that. suck. Yeah, you're spot on. So that, have, well, that's, that's what I want to see, Scott. Um, beautiful. Yeah. I think we have one more question or no more questions. Sorry, Jason. Sometimes hard to hear you. All right. That will wrap it up for another episode of The Breakdown. Thank you so very much, folks. Big shout out to all the crew that helps us every week. You know them. You love them. You don't know half of them. Daniel, the whole gang back there. Jason, Ian, the whole crew. I'm Sir Scoots. Obviously joined by Mitch every week, either here or in the building. There's the whole crew between us and the Bitfire gang. Thank you so very much for watching. Give us a follow. Ring the bell when it gets to YouTube. All those, like, you know, nerdy gamer terms you're used to. All right, see you all later. Peace. <laughs>